I think uh, when I sold my telecom company, I was confronted with the uh, problem, which is I'm a very uh, busy, hardworking person that likes to work and and build and do. And so it was uh, suddenly I'm out of all my business and I have to figure out uh, what's next, you know. I like building my own stuff, so I was always busy building my own apartments, my villas, I do them myself, I get into details of the architecture, the interior, the furniture, everything. And I've traveled around the whole world all my life because of my previous business, you know. So I think I have a combination of a good eye and good taste, good eye for the choice of the locations, you know, and good taste to be able to do something that looks um, uh, pretty, beautiful, happy. That's why, by chance, I was invited in uh, in Grenada and in Cyprus for opportunities. So I visited uh, the Caribbean, Grenada, through a friend and met the Prime Minister. And he said, uh, we have a problem, we don't have enough uh, hotels. So I told the Prime Minister, frankly speaking, you don't need ho more hotels of the sort of the hotels you have here. You need a really a high-end hotel because the people uh, who, we call them the opinion makers, or, or and also the rich and famous, they will never come and sit in a very sloppy hotel, you know. They're just too spoiled, like myself, you know, that I wouldn't be happy in any hotel I would stay. So I thought, I'm going to build you the best hotel in the Caribbean. And uh, I got, you know, motivated. So walking in the morning around the beach, which I, we did every day, I saw a piece of land uh, that had a sign for sale. So my friend who's from Grenada and been living there said, oh, no, 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 that's not the best spot. I don't know, no, no, this is the best spot. He told me why, it's at the end of the beach and it's covered by the mountains. It's, yeah, but who's gonna come all the way here? I told him, don't worry, just go get it. I was chosen just by walking like that, you know, and before I went to the plane to leave, we had already bought it, you know, and then I left and then we started. And he found this site, which at the time was just a, a greenfield site. There was nothing here. And um, he brought in architects um, from France, and together they conceived this property. It, it was a real passion project for him, very personally interested. It's a very nice island, still virgin. He does not want to spoil the environment. He went with the same concept of being reimagining time and having a minimalistic, super deluxe luxury hotel that he invested a lot to create an icon over there, to create the legacy of the family of Aura over there. Our luxury boutique hotels, uh, we're an independent chain in the making. Currently we have 50 keys in, in 51 keys in Grenada and Arjun. We're opening uh, 30 keys with the beach house in, in uh, Grenada towards Q4 of this year. And one of our, our key um, advantages as Silver Sands Origin in Grenada, uh, our villa product is just second to none uh, on the level of the Caribbean and even globally. It's a perfect setting for uh, families to have their their really own experience with, you know, their private pool, the, the variety of rooms, and, uh, you know, that they can have a whole family gathering meal in, in, inside the, the villa. So again, that has changed uh, with the evolution and more companies, more channels looking at different products. Uh, it changed a lot in our space, which is very exciting for in many parts because, you know, you, you need to meet that consumer um, expectations, what they're looking for, uh, just to keep your share growing. Well, in Grenada, as I, I chose all the looks of the, uh, the hotel, ultra modern, ultra slick, straight lines. That's my style, you know, I mean, I like simplicity. I, I kind of like the Danish approach and the German approach where they have very little furniture, straight lines, minimalistic, you know, I like that. So if you look at the hotel, it'd be like that. He, you know, he chose every piece of art that you see in this hotel, hundreds and hundreds of individual unique pieces of artwork. Each one was selected by Nagib and brought here. And everything from the cutlery, you know, the cups and saucers, everything that you see in the hotel, he took a personal involvement in. So it really is a, a reflection of him and what he wanted to bring to the Caribbean. So I'm not the guy who's mixing the concrete, of course, but because maybe I'm not the best in that, you know. But I'm the guy that doesn't leave an architect to design on his own, doesn't have an interior decorator. So I use the architect for the layout, for everything, but I will choose the furniture after he's done the, the, the layout for me, you know. I mean, if he tells me it's three meter by one, I will choose the couches, the chairs, the paintings. If you go to the bathroom, I'll choose the shampoo the smell of the shampoo. 
starting from your arrival, the architecture, uh, the way it's built, the way it's respect, respecting nature and landscape, the very simple uh, material palette. And as I said before, it's, it's, it becomes as a background. And the same everything we will try always to do to make sure that whatever we build embraces the nature. So our hotel in Grenada, I defy anybody, if you are at the boat, in a boat in the sea, away from the shore and look at the hotel, you won't see it. No, I think Mr. Gibb summed that up very well. I mean, I think the most obvious is from the, from the water when you're going past in a boat and looking at Silver Sands. It's quite hard to pick it out. It's quite hard to see where it is. Unless you know exactly where it is, it's quite hard to spot, which is, you know, again, a compliment to him and the architects. They managed to blend it in so well. But the main reason that we chose three elements to build the hotel is wood that looks like the trees, green decks that looks also like the leaves, and the rest is glass. So can, how can you see the hotel? And I think when you look around and see the architecture here, and it's, it's quite different, and yet it blends in so well, the color schemes, the, the height, the fact that they kept it very low, just maximum two stories, really blends into the, its environment very, very well. If you look at the beach, my, the previous hotel builders in Granada, of course, they didn't care. They built like six stories, and it was all about the money. You know? Maintaining the luxury standard in a country that is uh, not as, uh, I would say, experienced in that domain. Basically, the newest hotel which opened before us is 25 years old. We were very lucky to, to have the product itself of Silver Sands second to none. You visit the property and, and once you've seen other properties worldwide and then you compare, the physical asset itself is just beyond. In terms of spaces, finishes, quality of material, the last thing again, Naib is always looking for a 360 solution. So we have the hotel, we have the dream of having the management, hospitality management, hotel management. He hired the best people for that. Again, we'll not leave our customers. We'll have the facility management companies that will provide and sustain and maintain our projects as, as long as it lives. So it's always a 360 vision of whatever we're doing. When I was talking to Nagib, he was telling me about why he started this thing. Because he said, I wanted to create something that can understand me, anticipate me, the customer, uh, in the way that I expect to, to be treated when I go. So he started, that was his original motivation. He could have done anything, right? He decided to actually create a company, Silver Sands, that will have that kind of service. It's not just great service, it is anticipatory service. Here I am today, opening this most beautiful hotel in the Caribbean, like he promised. The same was in Cyprus. I met them and went met the president there. It was just in the crisis, the financial crisis again, and he was desperate and, uh, that anybody would come and invest. And they had this project on the marina. We needed an investor. Desperately, we needed an investor at the time because of the, uh, the banking system collapsed in Cyprus. So uh, it was impossible to finance it. My partners were a very nice family, father and son, reminded me of me and my dad, we were very close, you know. This was a swinging point in the relation that I felt. They're a family like myself, a good family. They portrayed honesty and hard work. The first time I met uh, Nagib was in 2013, uh, during his visit to Cyprus. He came in one morning and I, I remember that uh, he said, uh, we're gonna come in, I'm gonna go to the site. If I like the site, in, my, in the uh, meaning here in Aia Naba, because our headquarters are, in, are located in Nicosia, um, I will go to the meeting. Otherwise, I go back to the airport and I go back home or continue my business. Uh, to my, 
great satisfaction. Uh, I received a call that he was uh, coming to the meeting in Nicosia. I was extremely nervous to meet such a, such a figure. It was the first time in my life that I would uh, meet such an important uh, conglomerate and uh, well-known businessman. And um, I was with my father in the meeting room and uh, he, he walked in. He immediately broke the ice. Ayanaba Marina has been designed by the renowned uh, American architects, uh, Smith Group JJR, consisting of uh, luxury apartments and villas, world-class facilities uh, in marina services and marina berths, um, commercial area with uh, retail and uh, restaurants and bars. The project uh, is, consists of two twisting towers with luxury apartments, uh, one on the east side of the project and the other at the west side. Uh, there are uh, beach villas. The marina itself is a 600 berth marina. It's a state of the art. So putting in place a marina that hosts uh, a luxurious yacht and uh, two towers twisted different than whatever you see there in the island is completely something that was not there. Ultra-modern project, uh, a, a tower that is twisted, which cost us an arm and a leg, but again, economically viable, okay? And this created the legacy and the difference. The project is, um, has been designed to blend within the beautiful uh, surrounding environment of uh, the coast of Cyprus, where we are, next to the famous resort of Aia Napa. Uh, is surrounded by crystal clear waters, lovely blonde sandy beaches. Everything blends together with the architecture that uh, was managed to be designed and captured very well by the architects. And again, the president you know, you know, couldn't believe that we built this big marina. It was a 300 million project. No bank that was the banks were all in in vain, so it was very hard to do this project, to like the, like the Granada Hall. From a financial perspective, the returns are long-term, so not many people venture into long-term returns. But here in Pakistan, for example, as part of Aura, The chairman wanted to create a new lifestyle for the people of Pakistan, a new trend for the real estate, create guidelines of how you should be building, how you should be living, building on 16% only of the land. This is something that no one would do if you're allowed to build on 65% of the land and if you're allowed to go 18 floors up, but you still choose to go horizontal on 16% on a couple of floors up and still be successful and profitable. That is how you do business, because you create something different. In Pakistan, I bought the land during my telecom time because I wanted to diversify the activity there. And you know, there is no land in Pakistan, so it took us 10 years to consolidate the piece of land near the airport. So he invested in this land, lots of money to consolidate about 5,000 canals, which we're talking about 2.3 million square meter of land. And that was, to consolidate it, it would take time. So from 2008 till 2014, 15, he was consolidating the land, which means you're buying plots, you're consolidating this. There are a lot of issues with the land when it comes to land, but he managed to consolidate this land, which is the 2.3 million, and to keep it aside. And he started to do an exercise of a concept master plan, what this land could become, what this project could become, with the airport looming around and then opening 
in 2019 or 20, late 2018. The new airport, which we thought would never be built, but got, it got built and we were done 10 minutes, eight minutes from the airport. And the land we have, it's 600 acres, uh, 2.371 million square meter, what they call here 4,839 canals. The land is, is really big. And uh, for a residential project, uh, knowing that you're building only on 16% of the footprint, so uh, you have only 2,200 homes around this, between apartments and homes overlooking the Gulf. And the rest is some commercial activities and a retail village, a hospital, a school. And so this is how the land is. So you have 17% of roads, 11% of, of green areas, 35%, as we said, of golf course, 5% uh, of utilities, 5% of commercial. When we were trying to make our market research uh, to know what are the products that we should offer to this market, they were all telling us, no, people the, do not like to be in compounds. Uh, they prefer uh, a family home. However, giving them the, uh, the high luxurious product that they were not having in the market. So actually we created the demand by making the destination different than the, the comparable in, 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 in Pakistan. The name of 18, a lot of people think that it is attributed and associated with 18 holes golf course. Well, you can take it as it is, but it's actually 18th district of Islamabad because Islamabad has developed till the 17th Avenue. So we have developed 18 where 18 actually lies, right after 17th district, and we've named it 18 so as to be the pioneer of this new district. The golf course is very special here. And the reason why the golf course is special is actually golf depends a lot on the topography of the land. And our land, and 18, um, goes from the highway at zero level to a minus 65 and minus 90 to the very end. So going downstream is very challenging, but going upstream is even more challenging. Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to work in Pakistan, but we made it. We, we built an amazing uh, golf course with an uh, amazing project too. We have positioned 18 as the best project in Pakistan. In Egypt, I wanted to start, but small, because they were already, we were late in that market. So we had a small project called Pyramid Sin. And then we decided, okay, I mean, we have to expand in Egypt too. I mean, we can't just be everywhere and not be in Egypt, you know. So we went into uh, Z East and then Z West and then to the Silver Sands and the North Coast. These are the three major projects we have in Egypt right now. And some of them are, are very progressed, uh, like uh, the one in Sheikh Zayed. We are delivering this year the units to people, which is a record time mostly on time, which is very difficult in Egypt too, because there's things outside your control, like the permits and all that. That's a major point. And the customs, they always delay goods coming in. Our main targets at that time actually was uh, to have three main projects, one in North Coast, one in 6th of October, and one in, uh, in, in East. We started, first of all, with uh, Z Towers, actually, in, uh, in Ora, Egypt. It started, I think, our launch was in March 2019 at that time. In every project, like here in Z, in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt, we've, uh, we've had the opportunity of constructing uh, mid-rise and high-rise buildings. So, and, and also because in Egypt, it's not, I mean, you don't have many of these buildings. I mean, just have them on the Nile, but uh, it was one of the first that has been designed and constructed in one of the suburbs. So uh, we had to create a landmark as well. So that's why we, uh, we had a different form, uh, a building that expressed itself in a way different than any other building in Egypt. We have towers. For the first time in Egypt, you'll have towers in 6th of October. So I think this piece of land was very expensive at that time when we bought it, actually. If we are buying uh, a piece of land that's very expensive, we need to go to the area where they are selling the most expensive apartments. So we decided our designer should be from London. And we told them, we have iconic towers. We need to do something iconic. I think in 2023, we'll, it will be the year of delivery. I think during this year, by the end of this year, we'll be delivering the towers and uh, the apartments that we have in, in Z. Maybe next year, in 2024, it will be delivering Silver Sand and uh, 
uh, Zed East, some of the, the villas in Zed East. In real estate, you're selling a dream that people will live in, that this dream has to be very true. This dream has to be very meticulous in everything that we think. We are selling to a family, big family, smaller families, singles. So, and they're going to live in this place, their life. So you have to sell the dream, the right dream, the right product that cannot change easily. And you have to have a very far-fetched vision when you're doing this because the ever-changing world from a very simple home to a, a fully, fully automated home to a, a community. So uh, we're selling a very concrete dream that people have to live in. So the vision of Aura has started by selecting the locations and by thinking how can we have a portfolio or how can the chairman have a portfolio of different various activities but flagship projects. So it's not any project, it's not a, a project that will not have anything special. So the vision of Aura, if I may summarize it, is uh, how to be exquisite, exclusive, how to be uh, uh, different and how to achieve high quality and excellence in delivery. Something that has never been done. What I'm proud of is that I managed to get things done very fast without making mistakes. So this whole story, I mean, like the Egyptian operation is three, four years, and we're there. <laughs>